As soon as the Prime Minister, you know, he started out with all that lovely language about Jewish Australians, then he starts using terms like ceasefire and away he goes and then it became a motion about Gaza and, and southern Lebanon. I reckon you'd have to go back a couple of decades to find any other parallel like it in the Parliament. I, I mentioned at the top of the show, Peter Dutton was the one who reached out to the PM last week. I am surprised... The government wasn't on the front foot this week, given Parliament was resuming. They didn't put a motion on the table. They were pushed into it by the opposition. They had those meetings today, of course, the leader and the PM. They couldn't agree. The PM insisted that there be all these references to Lebanon and Gaza. He wanted the ceasefire in there. Dutton says, no, we know where we ended up in the Parliament. It was pretty extraordinary. Uh, what was your take? I mentioned, too, there, it carried with the support of the Greens and the Teals. What's your take? Yes, well, look, uh, I think it's a mistake. That, that's my view. I, I don't see what's wrong with basically passing an opposition motion about October 7 and then in a subsequent day, if you want to talk about a ceasefire and these sorts of things, to do that. And I had one opposition frontbencher actually say to me this afternoon, why did he walk into the trap? Which is you know, to, to look like you are um, uh, talking out of both sides of your mouth, as Peter Dutton said. I, I just think it's unnecessary sort of uh, a move by the PM. I mean, maybe he didn't want to give Peter Dutton credit. Maybe there were people in his caucus and cabinet who said, there's no way we're voting for that. Maybe he is worried about the, the vote in Western Sydney. Whatever it is, he himself has said over the weekend and Mark Butler has said and Richard Miles has said October 7 should be its own thing. It should be left alone. There shouldn't be vigils or protests from pro-Palestinian people on that date. So when it comes to October 8 and Parliament sitting, what's wrong with passing a motion mm. in terms of uh, the victims, more than 1,200 of that barbarity, absolute barbarity, on October 7? I thought it was pretty short-sighted. He objected to a couple of phrases, I understand, the PM. There were two meetings at 8.30 and 11 o'clock roughly this morning between Anthony Albanese and Peter Dutton. One of the clauses had basically the Middle East was quiet before the October 7 barbarity. I understand the PM didn't particularly uh, accept that, but that could have been amended or something, couldn't it? And just pass the mm. thing and then mm. we wouldn't be sitting here talking about it. And that's the main thing. That's the issue. It wouldn't be on the front pages of the paper tomorrow if you'd had just handled it in that fashion. But what the whole thing ha has done, and I guess Peter Dutton was probably thinking this, this could occur, is, again, it shows that real divide, massive divide on this war. And you said haven't seen it for a couple of decades. Well, Kieran was reminded today, Kieran Gilbert, my colleague of the Iraq War, Simon Crean opposing yeah. Australia's involvement in that, and and Mark I remember Layton that at as the well. Time. So I, I I think that would be uh, not quite the same because Australia's not involved in this war, but it's it's along those lines, you know. And I'm not sure it needed to be. The uh, the other statements that the PM and his ministers have made about October seven is it's a horrific terrorist incident. That's all the motion sought to sought to do. I, I don't think that motion would have taken anything away from Labor's calls for a ceasefire or for, for less civilian deaths in, in Lebanon and Gaza. But those calls, I, I interviewed Penny Wong about a week and a half ago and, and she said, oh, the only way out's a two-state solution when she was in New York and I interviewed her. And I'm like, Really? I mean, how many decades have leaders of the US and other countries been trying to achieve that? It's not that simple. That's probably not the first step out of this. So um, I, I do think that it, it also comes from Anthony Albanese and Penny Wong thinking that Yahoo has gone too far and that he is timing it to do with the US election and, and you know, that, that it's not just about defending Israel as much as they say it is. I think that's yeah, their that, real that's view. Yeah, but that's not what October that's 7's why... about, Andrew. That's the, that's... No, I know. That's the problem for the Prime but Minister. But I'm just trying to... That's a problem. I, I guess you asked me what, the, what, what I thought the, their motivations were and I, I've just given you the, the full gamut now. Yeah, no, I agree with you there. But, I mean, I think the problem is he is trying to put too much into the motion if they'd kept it simple and perhaps even shorter. And as I said, the government had led with the motion. I mean, Blind Freddie can tell you it's coming up when Parliament resumes if, if October 7 is the week of resumption. They should have been driving what the motion would look like rather than being led to it by Peter yeah. Dutton. And they could have yes. had a secondary motion and that would have been 
very difficult for Peter Dutton not to support a secondary motion about civilian deaths in Gaza. And they would have been on the front foot. But again, this goes to my broader point. We often talk about this. Who the heck is running their strategy? The government looks like it's reacting to events. It's not in charge of events. Mm. Now, it's supposed to be the biggest office in the country with the biggest megaphone being the Prime Minister's. And they look like flotsam and jetsam as things are happening around them, not in control of things.